No matter which platform it is, you need to be consistent. But consistency means different things to different people. Let's say you want to be consistent with emailing your email list. If you go to five people, each of these individuals are going to give you a different definition of being consistent. Some people email only once a year. I've heard about people that do that. Some people email monthly, some weekly, some daily. So before trying to be consistent, you need to experiment and you need to understand what works for you. Initially, when I was starting my email list, I was focusing on weekly emails. But later on, I felt as though I wanted to build a stronger relationship with my email audience. So I began doing it daily. Once I began doing it daily, I noticed that a lot of my diehard supporters stuck with me and a lot of iffy people ended up unsubscribing. All good. It doesn't matter if people stick with me or leave, I'm still going to be consistent. And hopefully you start to build that same mindset as well because it doesn't matter if you're choosing Twitter, it doesn't matter if you're choosing YouTube, podcasting, etc. You need to build promises with yourself. And the more that you eventually create a content creation schedule, you're already in luck. A lot of people don't even get this far. Now, it's simply a matter of executing this schedule. I'm sure you've heard of the quote, niches get riches. In my opinion, I'm not a big fan of this quote because I lived with this quote and unfortunately, I was burned by this quote. When I was initially starting my personal brand, I was focused only on public speaking. I would only think in terms of this niche. Now, in the initial stages, this was a good thing, but over time, I started to feel burned out much quicker. It's because I could only speak so much about public speaking until I started running out of material, right? So I had to reevaluate my entire position and I started to experiment more. Eventually, I started to learn that whenever tackling public speaking, a lot of individuals also needed to learn how to speak to human beings. Don't look at a crowd, look at individuals that just happen to be sitting by each other. This perspective dealt with social skills. Hmm. So naturally, I transitioned from only public speaking to adding social skills into my arsenal. Once I was dealing with social skills, I learned that human beings are not simply logical creatures. Instead, they're emotional creatures. If you can view them as emotional creatures first, then they just start making more sense. Suddenly, I added emotional intelligence into my arsenal. And over time, I added creativity. I added concentration skills into my arsenal. Out of nowhere, I started to get way more topics to speak about. I was no longer thinking in niches. I was thinking in themes. I was no longer thinking in terms of public speaking only. I was thinking in the theme of communication skills. So as you're building your personal branding empire, you're going to be thinking, well, what do I talk about? What's my theme? You don't have to answer that question yet. It's okay for you to start off with a niche, but hopefully you understand that over time, if you are feeling burnt out, there's always another opportunity to think in themes. And you'll notice once you're feeling burnt out, just take a pause and you'll see that there's a lot of these other subjects that you naturally hopped into as you were discussing your niche. Think about what all of these subjects have in common. And once you find out what they all have in common, that is when you are discovering your theme. Once you have been consistent with building your brand, you want to form strategic alliances. The reason that you want to form strategic alliances 
and not just alliances, is because on the online space, a lot of individuals add clutter to your life. They really don't care if your business and brand is successful, and they just want to form a relationship with you so they can mooch off of you or pitch their services to you. Therefore, you need to put a lot of emphasis on strategic. Because once you are being strategic in terms of who can help you and how you can help them back, that is when you are speeding up the learning curve. As you're building on a certain platform, others will often come with certain ideas that you initially never considered. When I was building my Twitter profile, I never for a second thought about starting an email list. But luckily, there was this one individual who wanted me to succeed, and over time, I wanted him to succeed once I got to understand what he was trying to do with his business. And he was the one who gave me the idea of building the list. So with the correct strategic alliance, not only do you get ideas, but you also want to be consistent as well. Because you see this other person consistently getting better at their craft, consistently uh, expanding from niches to themes, uh, providing value for others. Now you're like, okay, well, what excuse do I have to be lazy? So a strategic alliance uh, gives you added ideas and it holds you accountable. It's very fulfilling and it will help you with your personal branding journey.